so I've shown you guys this before but a quick tip right here unloading what we want to do is bring our trailer on a much more gradual angle if we use this right here the tongue lift this up get this to be a little bit more even unloaded the car hopefully you got a few tips from unloading the car there I feel like I can't teach enough people that because they mess up their bumpers putting them on and off the trailer so we have all kinds of goodies right here so this obviously is another s2000 video if you're sick of watching s2000 videos we'll see you on the next one but for those that like it let's go ahead and start uns uh, installing this I'll show you the car really nice car has the plastic window soft top he wants to replace that with OEM soft top with a glass back window it's not horrible but we just actually noticed right here it's almost dry rotted it doesn't take much pressure to kind of just tear it here it's kind of sad but that's just what happens over time to sit in the sun and dry rot car is really nice he has a bunch of little things he wants to do key things is a soft top and a clutch uh, retainers and keepers he has a new valve cover few odds and ends that we're going to put on and basically go down his list and replace the things that we have time for but as long as we get the key points that's what he's more interested in but a really nice car he did actually want me to get him another lid if they're still available last time i checked you could buy this lid this one honestly looks mint and he wants to replace it what's sad is when they uh, ship these they, in, they ship them in a bag they're not put in foam they're not bubble wrapped honda put them in a clear bag put a part number on it and ship it i'm going to water one because he said he wants it as a backup we should have it in two days. All right, scratch that. I just called Honda. It's discontinued. You cannot get it, unfortunately. Uh, this is our car. If you haven't seen the video on this, it's in the playlist. I'm going to move it so we can get his in and start taking his apart. I don't know if we're going to do it in order of on the list. Possibly we are. Kind of just walking around doing a bit of a vlog here. Uh, often we do the soft top first just because it's kind of a pain. It takes the longest. It's very tedious. Uh, possibly do that first then go to clutch the new K mod and down we are building the titanium exhaust for an upcoming build these are a double wall tip we're working on this is something that unless you really know what goes into it most people just put just a sheet metal tip on there huge thank you for the gift card this is much much appreciated I don't know how to say that as may sound cheesy but no we really do appreciate it because every day for lunch it's always a challenge what we're gonna do he's got a whole bunch of stuff here we're going through his notes He's really well organized. He's bought a lot of stuff from our store right here. It's like a picture book. It really is. It's interesting to see. Oh, brake light flasher. This is for your third brake light. This is one of those things I think is invaluable. Are we installing that? Yeah, we're going to install one of those. If you can prevent a rear end accident, even if it's just a two mile an hour impact, it's just one of those things that goes and ruins your day. If somebody bumps your bumper and scratches it, and then you got to sit and fight with them and fight with the insurance company and well it's not really that bad maybe you can get a guy to buff it out that kind of thing you've all dealt with that this might help prevent that i have it on all my vehicles but as i come to a stop i tend to look in my rear view mirror as i'm stopping just to make sure the other person is going to stop in too and i think that this catches your attention because there's a couple of times where you've seen people stop a little more abruptly or a little earlier than they would I don't know. It doesn't hurt. It's like chicken noodle soup. It might not might not help, but it certainly doesn't hurt. And it tastes good. No, no not that. No, oh, no. Just does. don't eat that. Okay. The lid is discontinued, this by the is way. right there in the picture. Discontinued product. Okay. No longer available for purchase. No, well, that just reaffirms my uh, Didn't expectations. Need to call. We have it in our picture book. Yeah, I just called uh, John at Honda and he said, yes, yeah, discontinued. Sorry, guy. It like, does fit well enough to where it would If I can squint and. No, we're not doing that. It would point at the ground, and it's not the grill is not big enough. Yeah, but you're—they're not looking good. They're going to take up 50% of the grill because of the size. Maybe for the RAC rally cars. Okay, you could match my truck having lights on the top. All right, so I get what that's about. Um, they do make some aftermarket ones. I wouldn't be opposed to making some aftermarket square ones fit in here and make them look right. I'm a favorite parts guy. Bring us some favorite parts. There's only four of those, right? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> I don't know. I've been uh, 
only or exactly one yeah. of these? Yeah. I have messed up before and ordered more. It's just that there's two more boxes the same shape and three boxes there. You see another one? Uh, down there. Oh, that's a different box. Okay. I don't feel bad now. Okay, so this is the passenger side headlight. This looked in good shape until you start looking at it close and you see it's got some texture to it. Looks like it's been fixed and clear coated. A little bit of the black inside paint is coming loose. You look at a brand new one and it just looks so nice. This is one of those things that I'd almost like to do to my car. My car is really, really mint until you look at the headlights and they're not as nice as this. And if you're not going to leave it outside, you're not going to leave it out in the elements. This is just one of those things that just really makes the car look really fresh. So everything from this headlight is going to go into here, the ballast and the bulbs. It does have a new bulb for the high beam. It's an LED. This will change over. This will change over. Everything will plug back in. I think he has a couple of bulbs here. I'll go through his list just to make sure. Uh, also going on right now is the top. The old top's off. The new top is going together right here. Another one of those things really makes the car look fresh with a brand new top. The car is in really nice shape, but with a brand new top, it really gives it that nice brand new look. Look at that signal light. Holy smokes. Is that signal going to get your attention, George? Holy moly. What's with the uh, red in the 194? It's, it's supposed to be amber. People like to do that, I think. It is a bit more red than it should be, but when your sight adjusts to that signal, you won't know what color that is. <laughs> wow. This customer actually bought some of our coil clips from the store. So I'm going to install all of these. We even include the little tool to get them apart makes the install much much easier so his clips are broken the little pins all come out right there uh, as soon as i started moving it it pulled out so these are designed to just clip right on you're not gonna have to change the wires or cut the wires you're just basically gonna take them off like this and then replace it and keep the wires in the same order i don't know if i've shown you the wiring colors but it's pretty straightforward you've got a basically a black and then a white with a black stripe Black is negative, white is positive, so just pay attention to the in and the out. That's the real thing that you got to be concerned with, if not it won't work. But that's it, that's where the wire is, it's really simple. You're going to put the little double sided piece on there, clean it and stick it inside the trunk. I'm going to tape this up before I put it back, just so it's kind of tucked up there, but it's pretty straightforward. So before I stick everything back up, we'll double check it and test it. Ready? Yep. There it is, look at that. So when you press it, it does the three flashes and then the slow flashes and then it stays on the whole time your foot is on the pedal then resets every time you remove it. So take the double sided and stick it inside this area right here so you can't see it. Top is on. Look how beautiful that looks. So they come in a box folded so it's best to put them in the sun once they're installed. It takes the wrinkles out or if you have a steamer you can steam this but it wants to sit in the sun for quite a bit get a little bit of heat in them they stretch out and they look beautiful they will be a little bit tight when you first drop the top you put the top open it and when you bring the top back it kind of closes around here because the fabric is super tight so don't panic you just have to help it a little bit until it closes and stretches uh, there is a handle right here I'm sure you guys seen it this will help you close it and then get your latches on there so the tops done Next thing is to do the exhaust. Someone's gonna complain at the beeps. So the beeps, just in case you didn't know, they're Morse code for H. And I learned that from a good friend of mine, Steve, about 24 years ago. So the beep, 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 beep is Morse code for H. He has the rebuild kit. He's bought some of the things from our store and did it himself, which is so cool to see. That makes one of the biggest differences I think I've shown you guys many times how to remove this. I'm not trying to sell you a new one, but if you don't damage your old one, these clips will remain in good shape. I'll put a link to the old video where I put this on, but I'll show you how to remove this properly with the correct screwdriver so you don't trash it. So if your ring is in good shape and the rubber is in good shape, you don't have to buy a new one, you can reuse it. I'm gonna go one better and do a demonstration how to remove this properly. I don't feel like looking for the video. Well. If you see this in your car, you're going to see it under the console. 
if you look closely, you're going to see these little notches right here. They're like an arrow. In the car, it sits like this. So those notches are at 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 8 o'clock, and 4 o'clock. Well, that is the area you're going to put a thin blade screwdriver. And it's going to release this clip right here. I'm telling you this because everybody breaks these. Even though we sell them in the store, I don't want you to break them. You're watching our channel because you're probably a little bit OCD about your car. And if you can do this kind of stuff, take your time. It will save you money, save you time and aggravation down the road. Because who knows, these might get discontinued. We won't be able to sell them in the future. So it's a good idea to learn how to remove it. I'm going to show you real quick. I'm going to set the phone up here and show you how that screwdriver works and exactly what it is you're doing so you understand it. Then it will make more sense when you take it out. You're going to look at it and go, okay, I get it. I know what I'm doing now. I know why the screwdriver is sticking in that hole. Thin blade screwdriver, medium size. So this arrow right here, the screwdriver is going to go between this and the rubber right here. You're going to stick it in there. Just kind of wobble it around. Don't false it. It's coming through there. You see that tab? What it is that you're doing? You see my screwdriver? You're actually pushing in that tab. See that? When you stick the screwdriver in there, you're going to pull up slightly on this clip as your screwdriver is in. Put the screwdriver in. Bend towards the middle and pull up on this. Doesn't take much pressure. Just a little at a time. You're basically going to do that. Go around to the next one, same thing. Put your screwdriver in there, angle it inwards, pull it up. All those clips will come loose. Of course, if the car is 20 years old, those clips might break. But just take your time. Don't bend them any more than you need to. And this thing should come out and you can reuse it. Clean it with some soap and water, scrub it, pressure wash it, whatever you've got to do. That's what I do if, you're, if your boot and clip is in good shape. We clean them and put them back together. Digging through his boxes, he has the spoon or brace. We'll put that on when we're up in the air. He has the magnetic drain plugs. He didn't ask about doing the fluid, so I'll check with him. Obviously, when you remove the bolt, you're gonna lose all your fluid. This is the OEM clutch kit right here. This is our install kit. This is something we recommend you do. We see so many times having issues when you don't do this, this is the slide, this is the seal, the main seal, the rubber isolator boot right here. This is just something that you don't do the clutch very often, so when you do, why not replace everything and do it right? Now, if this was a thing that you did every year, yeah, save some money, don't keep buying all these parts, but typically 10 plus years on a clutch. Why not just do everything that is usually gonna wear out? He supplied new exhaust hangers. Uh, they look like aftermarket, but we'll check them as long as this measurement is correct. They will be fine. It's not going to throw the exhaust alignment off. It did buy our updated drive shaft bolts. These are the harder bolts. This is something that we recommend you replace on the AP ones. He's got a set for the front and the back. So he's been shopping in our store. We are going to do a UK mod on this right now. We're still taking the clutch down, but I just wanted to show you what this looks like beforehand. When we do the UK mod, we like to do a little bit extra finishing, a little bit cleaning. We're going to refinish this pipe, make this pipe look a little bit better. It doesn't do anything except when you look under there, you can tell somebody cared. Uh, we're going to refinish these mufflers in ceramic black. And he has new exhaust tips, so this is going to look really nice back here. One of those things we like to do. It's the stuff that we do to our car. Clutch is exposed. You see a lot of material on the bearing right there, so it's probably close to wore out. Well, he has the rebuild kit like I showed you earlier, so it is going to include the slide and the seal behind that slide, as well as the main seal which goes behind the flywheel. The boot here, we often get people say, well, do I really need to replace the boot? You don't, unless it's damaged. This one's not in bad shape, but what happens is they get kind of hardened and they crack and then they don't seal side of the transmission which is this area right here so this is the clutch dust that gets on this shift fork well when you get water and junk in there too it turns to like a sludgy mess and it can cause the clutch to stick so if you get water and moisture and clutch material on there that bearing won't slide on that shaft the way it was intended so we like to replace that seal which is really a shift boot cover 
But we include it in our rebuild kit. All right, this is what the clutch looks like. A lot of times uh, we show the customer when they pick it up, but we put it on video too, just in case they don't see it in person. And also if you're thinking about doing a clutch, you kind of get familiar with our videos and kind of know what you're looking at. That way you don't look at this and completely freak out. So it's not not absolutely destroyed, but it's not in good shape. You can see how much it's been slipping all those hot spots. Flywheel has the same kind of markings and see how hot it's been. So what we like to do is look at this really close to make sure there's no fine cracks in that surface. Because if it has cracks, even when you surface it, the cracks are kind of into the metal. They go a little bit deeper and they can continue to cause damage. So yeah, let me find an AP2 and I'll show you. But there is more material here all the way through the back side. This front would look the same and it's the back that's different. These are comparison side by side, so from the front they look pretty much the same. This is the AP2 on this side. In fact, this is the one that came out of my red car. When you look at the side, you see actually how much material there is on the back side of it. And it's about 10 pounds worth. Uh, somebody asked me the other day about the weight between the AP1 and AP2. We've covered this many times before, but let's just do it again just so you, if you missed those past videos. There we go, there's your AP2 right there. There's our AP1, pretty much 14 pounds on the nose right there. And this is a super accurate scale purchased from Walmart a couple of years ago and it has been calibrated within a quarter of an inch. So we're pretty accurate right here. So just as a calibration right here, we're sitting at 82 degrees. We are bragging because it's May the 2nd and it's usually blistering hot by now. Now that's not to say by tomorrow it's going to be 97 degrees because that's what it does in Florida. Just as an idea, if you've never seen this before, we call this our feels good temperature because it doesn't really vary that much. Even when it gets really cold, it only goes to, down to about 70 and when it's really hot, it goes to about 85. So it's kind of like the feels good temperature. That's what you want it to feel like. The new flywheel bolts right there this is still the best grease we know of and that we use on our clutches we did buy a stash of it in fact I just found another stash of it from a company and we bought everything that we could from them it's really important to grease this slide here this is where the bearing rides and it's very important to have it clean and greased so there is a few ideas out there a few people trying different things we're gonna test some We've got actually a guy that has a grease. He's gonna send us it. We're gonna do a few tests like side by side with this and a couple of the high temp greases on the market that people are using. So it'd be a good alternative. But for right now, we have it in the store. We have it in little containers so you can buy it. And we have it in stock. I'm actually gonna put the price down here in a minute because uh, we did buy a bunch of it. Uh, this is directly from Goodridge. These should be our brake lines. We ran out of the 2000 to 2005s. So we should have a bunch of them right here. There they are. S2000, 2000, 2005 brake lines back in stock. Esther, put the brake lines back in stock. Like always, these bolts give us a really hard time coming out, which is why we're changing over to our bolts. These are the front drive shaft bolts. The rear ones, four out of six will not come out. We're gonna have to grind the heads off them. Problem is these are soft. The head is kind of soft, but the hex is shallow. The bolts that we provide, the hex is much deeper. And you can get a lot more torque on those without them stripping out, rounding out. These look like they're pretty darn close. They just look physically bigger, the French ones, but these feel a little stiffer. So we're good, just wanna make sure. If you're doing this and the alignment is critical, if these are a half inch off one or another, it will make your exhaust look a little goofy. So it's always best to check. If you do change, try and change all evenly. Then if it is tucking up a little bit more, it should be even. The fixtures are all going out today. We put five in the store, they all sold out. So if you put a back in stock request, as soon as they go back in stock, you will get a notification, you can click and buy them. Uh, five more just came back in. Jeff is making these right now. We're making these round the clock. So we're trying to get all of you guys fulfilled. This is a friend of mine, John's valve cover. We're gonna put these fittings in here in a second. 
This car is a good customer of ours and a good friend. He is getting an oil change and one of his HIDs are out and he needs the car tonight to pick up a friend from the airport and he's going to be driving at night. So we're going to get this done here in a second. We're building a car behind, but we're going to squeeze this in. Basically breaking my rule of one car at a time. So how many of you guys watched the video and went outside and looked at your car and noticed that almost all of your emblems are crooked? This one is straight, but it seems like every passenger side has crooked emblems. This one is off a little bit. See it's low and the gap is huge. Passenger side is even worse. This is one of those things that's like you now you can't unsee it. Look at that one, it's low and there's about an inch and three quarter gap between the light. We never knew these were so far off until we spent so much time designing and coming up with these fixtures. All these cars have crooked emblems. You guys talking about me? Yeah. Estra's here. With Dr. Dog, dog. Hey, dog, dog. Dog, dog. So I'm gonna go take the wheel and tires to Carlos and I will be back. So you better start packing the shipping quick. <laughs> Wheels, tires loaded up. And the last thing it needs is the retainers and keepers. It's getting AP2 retainers and keepers. This one is the one I told you earlier. We're kind of pushing it in to get this done. I want to show you step by step because I've done past video, but to take the bumper off. There is an eight here, five across here, a 10 in here, a bunch of 10s across there, and that bumper will come off because to access the headlight, bumper has to come off. This is what it looks like with the bumper removed. Now to get to the bulb, you gotta take the headlight out. So a bunch of little bolts. You got a 10 down there, a 10 there, two 10s there, three 10s there, and then there is one under there. There's the ballast, but you can't get to the bulb. So I'll take the headlight out and I'll show you what you gotta do next. So once you get the headlight removed from the car, of course you're gonna have to pull these plugs off. What I usually do is leave the bulbs attached there because they sometimes don't wanna come out. But you're gonna have to remove this. This is usually a tamper-proof screw right there, which looks like a Torx with a hole in it. Someone's already been in here and changed that to an eight and they've also broken that tab up there so hopefully this doesn't have something funky going on there like a retrofit bulb because obviously we have the replacement bulbs for it this is what it looks like when you remove that you got the little clip the bulb is right here this is like a bayonet style now there's warnings all over the place about touching this it's going to tell you uh, it's high voltage it could kill you 25,000 volts and of course you got a lightning bolt right here. Um, just be careful not to touch anything. I'm not going to put any warnings on the screen because there's warnings all over your headlight. But just be careful around this area here. These are the replacement bulbs. They are aftermarket bulbs. They're Sylvania. One thing to note, you see the little notch right there. That is going to line up right here to make the focus correct. Now this bulb can go in four different ways. You want to make sure this notch is going to the top and the plug is pointing down so it fits back into that housing right here. I'll put that back together and show you what it should look like. Like this, you want this wire pointing down and that needs to locate in there and rock it back and forth. Make sure it is in there correct. Then you're going to put this guy back on there. You're going to put it on and then tire, uh, turn it clockwise. There is right there, there is a lock, an unlock. But you're basically going to line those tabs up and turn it. turns about an eighth of a turn and locks into place right here. And that's going to line back up with that hole there. This is just really, it had the tamper proof screw just to basically stop you messing around in there. This is an unknown size. So what we're going to use is this guy right here which is an unknown wrench it fits everything installing the headlight back in there is a bit of a pain if you don't get it exactly lined up right you'll swear it's a different headlight because it doesn't go back in the hole trick is is you're going to lay it back like this and lay that point in there you're going to put it in and very carefully kind of slide it into place carefully you don't scratch the lens uh george is left esther is busy shipping so i'm gonna have to do this i can't hold the camera and do it at the same time so you're just gonna have to trust me on this one. That end in, lay it backwards, flip it upwards. All right, that one's back in. Time to do this side. Same thing, just flipped. 
Okay, I'm sure you know this one has the screw I'm describing. It's like a tamper proof screw. You're not supposed to be able to take this out. I don't know why they do that because then somebody else invents these. Uh, we have a few sets of these. These are available at most parts stores. There you go, tamper proof star bit set. So you can get these. That way you can take your headlights apart because they don't want you to take them apart. And I believe it's this size right here. Yep, so you're going to take that off, rotate that about an eighth of a turn. This comes off, the bulb is accessible behind that. All right, this one is done. The exhaust is back, the ceramic coating is done. Has the UK mod, we'll show you when it goes back on. He has new tips on this uh, to install, and then we're going to clean this pipe here. All right, wheels are back. They look fantastic. So he supplied the horns and wanted them took it out the way which this is like the perfect spot there is absolutely nothing over here but you're going to have the sound projecting outwards because obviously the bumper is open they just need wiring in and then we give you a demo not that it's going to sound quite right over camera but if it's anything like these bulbs they're definitely going to get your attention so he has the spoon bars this is the rear lower it goes under the exhaust this is the front the one the spoon called the engine bay bar comes with the bolt comes with the caps right here to go over your shocks we'll get those put on the exhaust is to go on next then you'll see what these look like we'll unwrap these right at the end that's just fine all right film it. Oh, you scared the crap out of the dog you eat the horn and she's like yeah. she started howling no she didn't howl you ready for a quick sound test Oh gosh, let me get out of here. No, you gotta stop there. Not that loud. No! We're, we're filming here, you have to be here. We're gonna see your hair move. Okay. And then we'll... Hey, water. It's not that loud. Alright, count to three. You ready? See, they're not that bad. <laughs> I'm not letting go. You immediately look for a semi. Yeah. You go, oh, wait a second, there's a semi coming. <laughs> Cleaning that pipe makes a, a big difference. I'm gonna do it a little bit more just to even it out. So kind of interesting, the spoon bar, it looks pretty, but it doesn't have the ability to bolt that back. So right here, there should be a bolt here, and then it should attach to those two holes right there. There's nothing for it, the bar is just plain. Uh, we're gonna mark it, and I think drill the bar, and maybe tap it so we can put bolts in it. This needs to be attached over here. We're gonna put a countersink fastener in there, in our center hole. And then we're gonna do something to attach these two. But that's kind of sad, because Spoon is supposed to be the premier stuff and... So there's your solution for the first side of it. Countersink it and put a countersink bolt in there. You know all the JDM kids right now are having a count. <laughs> They're like, you know what that is? That's a Spoon bar. Uh, yeah, but it doesn't fit. We're making it fit. Is that good? Yep. It doesn't even go in. It's just welded to it. Yeah, we thought that this actually protruded in here. It doesn't. It just stops. It's a block solid for the bolts. It just welds right here. Yeah. If I were making a suspension bar, I'd have it go into the tube. So the bolts that Spoon provide are not the right thread. Uh, they look more like an American thread. I think they're 3 8 so they go in one turn and stop. Let me show you them compared to the factory bolts. That's the correct thread. The there. stuff just isn't that good. Yeah, it's it's thread. Be, like some kind of manufacturer's thing on the calipers, they change colors, they don't seem to be as nice as they were. We don't have four matching bolts about the same size, so I'm gonna have to go to the hardware store, our bolt supplier, go get four of those and say, hey, I need four of those for a spoon bar. All right, bar is on. These are the nicest bolts I could get in that size that didn't have button heads. Exhaust tips, the tip's tight, George. Yeah. You wanna do the tip unveil? I almost need to put a drum roll in here, but it's not that crazy, it's just nice tips. Nice new OEM tips. Beautiful. Before we start it up, let's go ahead and put one of our license plate frames on it because it's just a dealership frame. Nobody wants that. All right, we've got the new tag on there. So a new LHT tag. Look how fresh that looks with the UK mod and the fresh black mufflers. Brand new tips. All right, go ahead. Let's get a sound clip. 
So the UK bot is adds a little bit of sound as you can hear. It still has a factory header, a factory cap. Just adds a little bit of sound. We'll let it warm up here and then you can hear it. We'll get George to rev it. This is uh, one of those things that's like breaking a bottle of champagne on a brand new ship. I always like to do like our preliminary clutch braking. It's way, way overkill, but it's, it's always good to do it. It's the way we do it with our cars, the way we do it with your car. We basically treat your car like it's our car, because it essentially is. When you give us the keys, you're giving us a car until we're done with it. Let's get some sound clips. It's a rattle over there somewhere. It's tip rattles. Really? Yeah, that don't sound good. We've got to try and fix that. Take two. I just replaced the bolt in that tip. It was a little sketchy. And we definitely don't want that. That sounds good. Now it's amazing that the UK get this sound and we don't. And it's not annoying. Bring the RPMs up, hold it like 2500. So it's pretty quiet cruising. It's obviously drone free. But when you roll into the gas or put it under load, that's when you get the sound. There you go, the UK mod. If that's something to consider, if you're not making a ton of power, it's probably the way to go. All right, I guess we'll road test this, make sure everything is happy. We can call him. You want to do the horns real quick? Just verify they're silly loud. <coughs> yep, silly loud verified. All right, George, there's another one done. All right, just assisted putting it back on the trailer and strapping it down. It's something we always like to do. It's a nice thing to do for your customer. Also, it's for safety. That one's done. Thanks for the business, John, and we'll see you on the next video.